Hello everyone, uh, this is uh, another podcast I make, it's about Mendelian genetics. Uh, this is probably the first one I give to this class. Uh, I'm doing this podcast uh, so that, uh, that because there are uh, many terms that you need to know in Mendelian genetics uh, that will help you solve any problem that you face. And if you don't know these terms uh, very well, then you cannot analyze the problem and solve it in the way you should. Uh, that's why I'm making this video so that you can watch it over and over again until you're sure that you got all these terms. Okay, so just as a reminder of what we said in class, we said that Mendel uh, was experimenting. He did his first experiment where he crossed a true breeding tall plant with a true breeding short plant. And we mean by true breeding that it's pure for this trait and he got all tall offspring so he got 100 percent tall uh, plants uh, and then he concluded that uh, the trait of uh, tall is dominant over the trait of short later he he crossed two of the f1 generation we call this the f1 generation he crossed them together and to his surprise he got 75 percent tall and only 20 and 25 percent short uh, therefore he concluded one thing that every trait is controlled by two set of instructions not one and this the, the, the set of the instruction for short was hidden in the f1 generation and reappeared in the f2 generation now what we call them today what governs a trait or what controls a trait is a gene and the two sets of instruction are alleles. So these are the terms that you need to know in order to solve any question that you face. So gene, when we say gene, that's a trait or what codes a trait. A gene is a part of a chromosome. It's the part of the DNA. <coughs> that governs one of the traits. For example, we have a gene for eye color, gene for skin color, gene for hair type, gene for blood group, etc. Allele, uh, alleles are different forms of genes. So if the gene was eye color, the allele could be blue eye color, uh, green eye color, brown eye color, etc. Now, we may have a lot of alleles for each gene, but every single person has two alleles for each gene because we have pairs of chromosomes if you remember now two alleles govern one gene so we have several cases in, the, in this uh, in, the, in this case so and here we go to the next two terms which are homozygous and heterozygous if the two alleles that are uh, for if we're talking about one trait and the two alleles for that trait for that gene are the same for example big a big a or small a small a or for the tall short example of mendel big t big t or small t small t we call this a homozygous organism or a homozygous person for this trait for this gene because they are the same if they are different big a small a or in the example of the plants big t small t then it's he's a heterozygous. Heterozygous, it means the two alleles aren't the same. In the heterozygous case, what appears to the outside, for example, for the plants, we have big T and small t, but the plant will be tall because big T or because the, the, the allele for tall is dominant over the allele for short. And so what appears to the outside and what's inside the difference between them are, are these two traits, uh, these two terms, genotype and phenotype. Genotype is the actual gene that is in the DNA. So if you were asked, what is the genotype of this organism concerning this trait, you would say the letters, big A, big A, or for the plants, for example, big T, small T, small T, small T. This is the answer. This is your answering or you're telling the genotype. The phenotype is what appears to the outside based on what is the genotype. So, tall. If you were asked of the phenotype, you answer in a word, short, uh, blue, eye color, whatever. Okay, so, when you have the phenotype, you can't 
be sure of the genotype because if you have a tall plant it might be big T small T and it might be big T big T but when you have the genotype you're pretty sure of the phenotype since the genotype tells you exactly what are there and you can conclude based on if you know which one is the dominant which one is the recessive now let's say we have a question uh, I gave you a question which is uh, black rabbits black heterozygous rabbits crossed with white homozygous rabbits okay the steps of solving uh, this type of cross the first step is to put the parents okay so black heterozygous rabbit crossed with white homozygous rabbit now since i said heterozygous rabbit and they are black so no need to tell you which one is dominant because if an organism is heterozygous so he has the two letters and he looks black so for sure black is the dominant one since that's what appeared of the two letters so directly here you can conclude that black is dominant since the rabbit is heterozygous and looks black the next thing you do is you put the genotypes of the parents so this one will be big B small b crossed with here it will be small b small b of course you symbolize them first so big b means the black small b means white then you put the gametes that they would give if you remember by my meiosis the chromosomes or uh, meiosis reduces the number of chromosomes oops reduces the number of chromosomes by half so for this case for the black heterozygous he might give big b or small b and the chance is 50% 50% and here he can only be, give small b or small b so there are there is no other chance when you get the gametes you put them in the Punnett square and I think you already know how to do it so you put on the first row big b small b and on uh, the column or on the side small b small b or even one small b that's enough it will be the same result and then you count the four and uh, let's say I asked you give me the genotypic percentages and the phenotypic percentages then you need to answer the genotypes by letters and the phenotypes by words black white genotypes you should, should mention if it's big b big b small b small b big b small b try to do this and show me your results when you come to class i hope that this was helpful and i see you next time in class bye